<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today this might be a little bit of a off-the-wall video, and the reason why I'm doing a video in this style, not really showing the phone directly here, is because uh, this is the phone I have. It is a OnePlus 3T, and the reason why I'm doing it in this style is because uh, when I did my overall first impressions of this phone, um, I was surprised that people just genuinely enjoyed this, where I wasn't showing a whole bunch of benchmarks or anything else crazy. I unboxed the phone, and then I got in front of you all on camera here, and I just talked about my thoughts and feelings with the phone and my first month's use of it or so. Well, even though it's not the newest phone out on the market, yes, it's been succeeded by other phones and even within OnePlus. I know right now the OnePlus 5 is out right now. It is kind of... A little bit hard to find, and there's going to be some successor to with the OnePlus 5 coming out here soon, predictably at least. Um, I figured I would still talk about this phone because a lot of people still rave about it, and uh, I wanted to give my overall impressions on a custom ROM on here. Uh, one thing I was asked many times when I did my first impressions review was, why don't you just flash over Lineage OS, or why don't you flash over insert custom ROM name here. Uh, because in that video, I had said that I did take the phone and I rooted it when I first got it. So I unlocked the bootloader, I rooted the phone, uh, but I kept Oxygen OS on here, which Oxygen OS is not a custom ROM. Uh, my definition of a custom ROM is a ROM running on a phone, and if you don't know what ROM is, the operating system variant of Android that is running on a phone uh, that is not from the original manufacturer. So yes, even though Oxygen OS is not true vanilla Android, it is what uh, what uh, OnePlus makes. So to me that would be stock, even though it's really not stock Android. But to get stock Android you need a Nexus device or a Pixel device. Point is, on all that stuff, the point is there, um, a lot of people ask me, why don't you just get a custom ROM? And I said, because I wanted to use the phone as is. Yes, I did root the phone, uh, but the rooting that I did and the few applications that I was using did not take away from uh, the way the phone functioned naturally. And it didn't, you know, do anything else that was crazy on there. I didn't put on a custom kernel. Um, I didn't put on exposed modules or anything else. Um, I was just running Auction OS with root on there. And I had like two applications applications that I was using for that. Uh, mainly, I just wanted Root for uh, the screen dimming effect, or um, kind of like what Flux does, where it just kind of tints your screen orange. That is a necessity for me on my devices that I use. Uh, computers, smartphones, tablets, whatever it might be. Well, I decided to put Lineage OS on this phone. In case you don't know what Lineage OS is, and I did not know this either, uh, the formerly, well, the ROM formerly known as Cyanogen Mod, uh, which is a extremely well-known and well-respected custom ROM, uh, essentially got rebranded and renamed to Lineage OS. I personally didn't know this, so when a lot of people were pointing to Lineage OS, I was thinking it was just some other variant of whatever OnePlus made. From what I understand, OnePlus makes Oxygen OS and Hydrogen OS, and I believe Hydrogen is more geared for Asian environments and um, geography and such, while as the rest of the world gets oxygen. That's what I understand there, at least. Um, so I was thinking it was just some other variant alongside that. Uh, no, it actually isn't. It's essentially CyanEngine Mod, just rebranded. Um, and the reason why I ended up switching to it, it wasn't that I was getting any type of issues with this phone. Um, this phone was running fine for me for the most part. Uh, I had tried some of the beta updates for Oxygen OS. Uh, I was having a few issues here and there, but I didn't complain about it, of course, because they're betas. And uh, then I went back over to completely, you know, stock, like regular stable release, and I was fine with that as well, too. Uh, but I decided to try out Lineage OS 1 because I wanted to see how a custom ROM would work on here. Uh, and two, recently with the announcements and discoveries that I'm hearing my dog here. Hey, Lily. You need oxygen? Sit. 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 Hey. Will you sit? Like, seriously, dog? My dog coming in and interrupting the video, that's kind of similar to, like, how the way people were pestering me with custom ROMs on here. It wasn't that bad, honestly, and that was more cute, if anything. Uh, but the point is on there, uh, recently there was a bit of a discovery that came out that uh, OnePlus was data mining its users a little bit, and it was taking a little bit too much data without properly consenting or being transparent. Now, I looked at this, and first off, I'm of the belief, if you don't want your personal data being mined, your, your browsing habits, 
habits, all that other fun stuff. Um, don't get a smartphone, just don't use a smartphone. If you want to be completely paranoid, don't use a cell phone at all. Um, that's my opinion on it. So for a lot of people who say, oh, this is why you should go with a iPhone or this is why you should get a Pixel or whatever it is, um, all these companies are going to be data mining off you. It's just some are going to be a bit more transparent than others. Uh, OnePlus just wasn't being the most transparent with theirs. And I looked at what they were mining and I didn't see it as anything detrimental, but I honestly used it as a really, really, really good and convenient excuse to get off of Oxygen OS and kind of, you know, get my button gear and try and flash a custom ROM on here. You see, custom ROMs are no issue for me. Uh, the main issue is I just hate reinitializing my phone. And I was able to do this away from home. I was actually traveling at the time I did it and everything went pretty smoothly. I might have had to spend, you know, an hour in total getting everything all set up, signed in the way I liked all that stuff. Uh, but if your device is backing up properly, it works pretty well. And that's not just with Lineage OS, it's with uh, any type of custom ROM. Hopefully that should be the case. So I took the latest version I could find of the nightlies, which are now weeklies. I know it's kind of weird. Um, nightlies used to be, you know, compiled and pushed out every night for a device, hence their name. But now with the OnePlus 3T, you have nightlies, but they come out once a week, which I'm perfectly okay with. I just don't know why they're not called weekly updates as opposed to still being called nightlies. Um, alas, on there, I took the latest nightly I could find. I downloaded the, I believe it was the stock Google Apps package flash both them over, and then I started trying out my phone. Now, the first day, I'm kind of just throwing that away because that was me, you know, getting acquainted with the phone. Um, it was kind of getting a little bit warmer than it needed to just because I had wiped everything off of it and then it had to reinitialize everything uh, and all that other fun stuff. So, you know, build its cache and everything. That's just how Android works. Uh, but in the days after that, you know, at this point, I've used it for a few weeks. My thoughts on it so far are it is a extremely solid operating system. Uh, one of the things that I discovered, and this is not just, you know, with lineage, but with custom ROMs in general, and I guess grand a good custom ROM here. Um, this has made my phone run better than before. Um, I've noticed, you know, it's running a little bit smoother, but the main thing I want to talk about is really just, it doesn't get as hot as it used to. Um, now my phone did not get burning hot, uh, but one of the things I do use is Android Auto. Uh, and I have Android Auto integrated natively into my car, which means that I could just take my phone, hook it up to my car's USB port, and then um, I have Android Auto on the in-screen dash. Now, with my previous phone, the Nexus 6, uh, it had issues where it was getting hot when it was hooked up there because, you know, it's displaying GPS and it's streaming music off of Bluetooth. I know even though they have it hooked up through GPS, it's connected through Bluetooth. It's, well, through USB, it's connected through Bluetooth. It's kind of silly. Um, but you would still just, like, wind down its battery and the phone would really get hot. Uh, then I had the OnePlus 3T. On Auction OS, it... It wasn't as bad, but you still kind of had that. And now when I'm on Lineage, it doesn't get as warm as it used to. Um, and I actually noticed that now I'm able to properly charge my phone from my car. It sounds silly that I'm mentioning that, but you see what ended up happening with my Nexus 6 and even with my OnePlus 3T, um, when I would hook them up through Android Auto on there, they were burning more battery power than they were getting back. So if I just hooked up my phone, yeah, if I hooked it up to my car to charge it up and I was using Android Auto, uh, my battery life would go down a little bit. Like my battery percentage would go down. Uh, but I notice even when I have GPS on, Bluetooth, I'm listening to music, I'm navigating somewhere, uh, I'm actually able to charge my phone in my car now. I don't know if that just means there was a whole bunch of bloat from OnePlus underneath. I feel like that's probably it. Um, when it comes to just battery life in general as well too, I've been able to squeeze a day, day and a half out of this. Uh, there's a lot of times, you know, on purpose, I don't charge my phone. Um, I'll just kind of, you know, leave it running overnight and I might lose while I'm sleeping five or 6% battery life. And that's about it. Um, I could prevent that if I wanted to put it into uh, low truck, like low battery mode, but, or low power mode. Uh, but I don't do that just because I want to get, you know, some realistic readings on there. Uh, and then when it comes to root access, that's another thing, because I said that I had rooted my phone and I do enjoy normally having root on there. Uh, for the past week or so, I have not had root on my phone. 
Uh, this might surprise many people because uh, if you're new to the channel, you haven't seen any of my other videos, or you've just seen you know my OnePlus videos or any type of other mobile videos, um, I like to do modding. I like game console modding and such software, hardware, whatever it might be. I like modifying devices. Um, and technically, this does fall into the category of modding. You know, I went in, I unlocked the bootloader, I end up wiping the phone, I was able to flash over a custom ROM on here that was not from the factory. Uh, but normally, root access kind of fi finds a way into that as well, too. Uh, and with the latest nightly here, I ended up just flashing it and not rooting my phone, and honestly, I'm not missing it. Uh, there were really only two things that I was using it for. I was using it for Attaway, and I was using it for um, Flux or CF Lumen to, you know, tint my screen orange. Well, on, um, on Lineage OS itself, there's actually an application, like it's built in, it's called Live Display, and you can adjust it to where you are, and it's like a simplistic version of CF Lumen or Flux. Uh, you can still tint your phone orange, and it works very well. Uh, I've been extremely happy with it, and there's other, you know, alternatives, like CF Lumen you could use without root, uh, there's Twilight as well too, but it's just, those apps with root were perfect. If you didn't have root, it didn't look right. And with this, I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing from my results here. Uh, the other app I was using, as I said, was Addaway, and that has really been useless for me for a long time. Uh, I kind of just put it on in general, but um, I noticed it didn't really do the job very well. There were, like, for example, YouTube, I use YouTube Red, so I don't have ads natively on there. Uh, on any type of mobile sites, I was still getting ads through there, and then for any type of apps that do have ads on them, uh, most of the time I end up just paying for the pro version if I like an app. Some people might think that I've spent a lot of money on apps, not really. I think in my, in my lifetime in total, I've spent maybe less than $20 on apps because there's not too many apps that I need to purchase and I don't pay for microtransactions. So I haven't needed that. And with that, I kind of looked at it and said, do I need root on here? The answer was no. And I've been trying to use my phone without root and I notice no difference, which is good. If it can get me away from using that, that's fine. Uh, Rue was kind of a necessity before for some of the things I did, but now, especially because I really don't heavily customize my phone and Lineage OS suits me pretty well for what I need to do and some of the extra features I might want to get. Um, like for example, if I want to do something like if I hit the restart button right here and I want to get this restart menu, um, that that feature you can just unlock in Lineage OS and it seems to be fine. Uh, so overall, I've just been getting benefits off running this custom ROM. And I will say, even with the bigger picture right here, this has reaffirmed my love for Android. And um, it has really showed me why I prefer Android over other platforms. Uh, now, when it comes to Windows Phone, I've thought that was a cool platform, but it kind of has a vicious cycle. Well, it did. I'm, I'm not sure how long it's going to be around for, but it did have a vicious cycle of it has a small user base. Because it has a small user base, there's not that much development. Because there's not that much development, there's not that many apps. Because there's not that many apps, there's not that many people that are happy with it, so then they end up going over to another base, such as iOS or Android. Um, and it just kind of continued in that cycle. Now, a lot of people might ask what about iOS what are your thoughts on there a lot of people think for some reason because I've been on Android for so many years that I hate Apple and I hate iOS um, I really don't it's just that Android is my preferred platform what I'm saying here is I kind of forgot why Android was my preferred platform um, especially you know when the Nexus 4 came out I never uh, ran any custom ROMs on there I did custom kernels I did you know expose modules the Nexus 7 again I never did I just did stock Android on there and then the Nexus 6 I did stock Android as well too I never even flashed custom kernels or anything it was just stock with root that's all I did on the Nexus 6 so for years I've just not been customizing my phones and that was one thing I used to promote with Android. I used to say, hey, if you want something that gives you complete control, you want, you know, complete access on your phone, you can do whatever you want to, you want customization, this is great, but I wasn't even really doing that to my phone. So that's why there were a few times I questioned, I was like, would I be okay with iOS? Uh, and I actually do have an iPhone. Uh, previously, I had a iPhone 6S, these are for work, and I have a iPhone 7 right here for work, again. Uh, so I get my daily dose of iOS, and it's not a bad operating system, it's just not for me. Uh, I'm not crazy about the ecosystem, not crazy about the aesthetic of it, um, and I'm not crazy about, you know, the phone itself either. Uh, but I do like Android because it gives me those choices. Here we had a phone where I liked the phone, I liked the hardware, I wanted to support it, but I didn't like what the company was doing with their operating system. So what do I do? 
I take the phone, I wipe it, I put on a different operating system that more aligns with what I would like from my phone, so I can therefore still keep the same phone, still love the hardware, but use a operating system that is tailored for my needs. Unfortunately, I cannot do that with a iPhone. If I have this phone right here, and I say, you know what, I don't want iOS on here. I want my own heavily customized version of iOS, or I want to put on some type of other OS. I can't do that, unfortunately. Yeah, some people are gonna say you could jailbreak, do whatever you want to, and that's kind of another thing with Android and iOS as well, too. With jailbreaking, you have to hack or modify your phone, so to speak. It is a hack for the phone. Hack, I'm using that term loosely. When it comes to Android, for example, really, unless you have a Samsung phone, you should be able to root with no issues. Granted, yes, the, the phone manufacturers are going to have to put out, you know, their ROMs and images and all that other stuff. Um, so they're going to have to release that so then people can, um, you know, tailor everything to that device. Uh, but the point is on here, like, OnePlus has not done anything to stop me from rooting my phone or to put a, a custom ROM on here. Uh, yeah, I might have voided my warranty, but I don't really mind all too much with that. So that's just another thing that I, I really like with the Android ecosystem as well, too. And Lineage OS has definitely reaffirmed that love for Android that um, I kind of just forgot that I had. So coming back to the picture here, you know, my thoughts on running a custom ROM on here. I absolutely love it. Um, I can definitely get more longevity off this phone. And I want to bring up this other phone as well, too. I have a, you gotta listen carefully. I have a Samsung Galaxy S 4G. I had to say that because that, that is what the phone is called. It is a original, it, it's somewhere between the Galaxy S and the Galaxy S2. And it's not true 4G, it's 4G, it's high speed packet access. Uh, but the point is this phone came out in I believe 2010 or 2011 and I looked the other day on XDA developers and this phone is still being supported as of a few months ago, unofficially of course, but it's still being supported years later. And that's, that, that's awesome. I think that's fantastic. So if you are thinking of getting a OnePlus 3T, if you want to track one down, or if you have one, you're thinking of putting a custom ROM on there, um, I would absolutely recommend it. Maybe if you, even if you have another OnePlus, if you have a OnePlus 5, or if you have a OnePlus 3 or a OnePlus 1, uh, I definitely recommend trying a custom ROM, trying your hand at it, and getting something that is just a little less bloated and something that's, I guess, going to be more updated, because that's also another big thing. Probably my last thing I want to say to tie this off as well, too, uh, OnePlus has been known to be slow with updates and I've kind of experienced this but granted I went from being a Nexus owner to a OnePlus owner. So Nexus gets priority, OnePlus they're trying to get there. They don't get priority from Google but they're trying to push out updates faster and I can tell and I can tell that they're really trying on this phone um, and just their devices overall. But with the uh, recent, for example, like the uh, the recent crack attacks, K-R-A-C-K, uh, the crack attacks for Wi-Fi uh, that were released and shown just those vulnerabilities, uh, Google said that they were going to patch it, and I'm sure they did, they're, they're Google, they're going to, uh, but they're going to be patching it and putting it in the November 2017 updates for phones and all that stuff, and then all the manufacturers can put in their own stuff. Uh, OnePlus, I'm sure they're going to patch it in pretty early on their beta uh, OS's, which that's fine. Uh, with stable, you're gonna have to wait longer. How much longer? I have no idea. But with, um, not with CM, with uh, Lineage OS, I almost wanted to call it a Cyanogen mod, but with Lineage OS, I waited like three days for a fix. Three days. Um, and that was because I think they fixed it the next day or the day after, and then I just had to wait for my nightly to come out, which it came out on a Thursday. So I was vulnerable on this phone for a matter of like, let's even be generous, for a matter of like four days, tops, they were able to get it updated faster than Google was, which that's another thing that's nice. If you stick to a reputable, good custom ROM, they're going to officially, unofficially support you and keep you updated pretty well. So that's also another reason why I'd recommend them for some older phones or even, you know, a modern phone like this if you really want to. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too.